Hi all, uh, welcome to Tri T Technologies. Uh, please like, subscribe our channel, and also don't forget to share with your friends and families. Comment about your queries and feedbacks. Join Telegram channel if you have any queries posted. We will try to reply you back. And also, whoever are watching, please subscribe. There are a lot of non-subscriber views, but they are not subscribing. Please encourage education channel so that it will be very helpful for uh, people who watching, and also it uh, boosts our uh, confidence to do more videos. So we have already done two videos in Linux in depth. So this is the third video. So please uh, go and watch those two uh, videos as well, which will give you a clear picture of what is Linux and also how you do your restarts or uh, how you do uh, Linux um, uh, management. Okay, so in um, uh, terms of um, shutting it down, enabling it. Or powering it off. Okay, so I've all uh, I've mentioned all the modes there. So go and check that video. So this is the third session. We'll discuss uh, more on services. Okay, so how the Linux services can be managed and what are these services and um, what services will start when we um, start our Linux box. Okay, so we'll see all that uh, stuff in this session. Okay, so this is like. Um, Whenever you start your Linux computer or Linux server, it might be your desktop, it might be your server, it might be any distribution. Okay, so whenever we are starting our server, there are services or the processes. Okay, so there is a pro batch of processes which will be uh, running. Okay, so this is a screenshot which I have taken. Okay, so when you are starting your server, so you will see all these processes running behind okay so these are all the services or process it will start okay so nothing but it is initializing your system okay so whenever you are booting okay so it will initialize your system with all these processes okay so this depends on how you have uh, made your system okay or how you have done this setup on your system okay so this is very very important like how this is uh, how this um, uh, system initializes okay so there comes some of the initialization systems okay so in old um, versions of the linux distributions we have some of the initialization systems called sysv in it bsd in it and linux standard base in it okay so these are the initialization systems used to be like these are the initialization systems uh, we used to have in the olden linux boxes okay so now whenever you are uh, working on the new linux distributions or linux machines you will see most of the machines with system d okay so what is system d okay so whenever you want to manage your services or whenever you want to um, manage your processes threads demons okay so these are all the things which you can um, do using system d okay so you see this is the system d which manages all your services like you can start you can stop uh, you can disable you can enable you can check the status of the service process okay so how you will do this using command called system ctl okay so remember this command this is very very important system ctl using system ctl command okay so we will manage all our services in the linux box okay so system d is the one which designed to provide functionality uh, which suits the modern complex servers okay so uh, which were the servers like day by day there is a complexity increasing okay so that is the reason why they have designed something called system d okay and also it will do more um, things which cannot be done using this older initialization systems like sysv bsd or lsb okay so because whenever you are booting your um, machine system d will make the process pretty fast so the booting time will be the booting time is decreased because of the system d why what is the reason because whenever we are using sysv or bsd LS lsb okay so these initialization systems has been written in shell okay so shell scripts so using shell scripts this initialization processes will be running so it will take some time okay so but when you are talking about system d system d is written in language c okay so it is very easy to compile okay so when you compare with the uh, shell scripts okay so it, it will be very very easy to 
compile your machine with the C. Okay, so the reason why the booting process is very fast. Okay, so uh, one more important thing is like whenever you are using SysV init and system D, okay, so there will be a difference in your locations. Okay, what do you mean by difference in your locations? If you see here, for example, if I am running a program called SSH, okay, so everyone know like what is SSH, like, um, so whenever we are running a service or program called SSH, it will be having a service which will automatically starts when your machine is started, okay. Uh, why I am saying this is whenever you log into a Amazon box or any box, like you will be uh, doing SSH, right. So it is already being started whenever your machine is booted. Okay. So this is an automatic process which is already been started in the background. Okay. So how it works? If it is CSV initialization system or if it is a system D init system. Okay. So there will be difference in your files. Okay. Uh, I, I mean the location of the services. So if you are going with init D, it will be etc slash init dot D. But if you are going with the system D, it will be etc slash system D slash system. Okay. So let me show one um, example here. So this is the SSH service. So this SSH service is the one which locates in etc slash init dot D. Init dot D nothing but your machine is not initialized with system D. Okay. So nothing but this is an open BSD secure shell server. Okay. So like this is an old machine. Okay. So old initialization process. But when you are talking about system D, it will be in this format. You will have your unit, your service and install. Even you can write these um, services. Okay. So if you know how to start your program or your um, scripts. Okay. So you can automatically create a service in etc system D system. You can write your service name and you can uh, uh, run your command like whatever the command for example if you have an application we, you know what is the command of that uh, like if you know the command to start that application you know the location of that um, uh, binaries or the yeah the binaries of that application then you can execute from exec start okay and also you will have kill mode and also you have restart okay so this is the difference between the services okay so like um, same service but in different uh, initialization machines okay so if you have system d then definitely you can go for etc system d or else you can go for etc in a dot d okay and also how you can how you will check whether your system is using system d or not or this is a regular interview question if you are three plus or four plus definitely when you are doing an L2 administration job, this is definitely helpful. Okay. So what will be the question is like how you will say that your distribution or the your Linux distribution is using system D or anything else. Okay. So the simple thing is you can run few commands. Okay. Let me go to my box. Okay. So I log into my uh, AWS. Okay. So this is my AWS box. Okay. I, clear this and this is my AWS Red Hat. Okay. So if you see here, if I go to CD and I'll say run system D and I'll say system. Okay. So I have this directory available. Okay. So whenever you see that run system D system is available, then you can say that then uh, this um, init system is system D. Okay, so your init system of this server is system D. Okay, if you don't see this, okay, so for example, I'll go to my WSL box. Okay, so this is my Ubuntu box which is installed on top of Windows. That is the reason why we'll call it as WSL. Okay, so now if I run, if I say run and if I say system D, okay, so there is no system D here. Okay, so no such file or directory means. This is not a system D init system. Okay, so this is just a init D system. Okay, so it might be sysv. Okay, so this is initialized with sysv or BSD. It might be any other initialization system. Okay, but if you see here, this is the new version of Linux distribution that is Red Hat 8. Okay, so here we have 
in its system as system D. Okay. And also one more command to check that is stat. Okay. So use stat has been slash init. Okay. So has been init will show what kind of init system you are using. Okay. So my init system is system D because the symbolic link directs to LIB system D system D. Okay. So this is initialized with system D init system. Okay. The same command I will run on any other init systems. It won't show this. Okay. So it will just show like has been in init. Okay. I it won't show any system D links. Okay. So it won't show any symbolic links. Okay. And also another command is da, uh, sorry, slash proc. Okay. So PROC is nothing but your uh, pseudo file system. Okay. So if I run a command called uh, stat and I will say PROC slash one slash exe. Okay. So you might be um, thinking like what is this one? Okay. So I'll tell you what is this one. Okay. So if you see here, it is just showing that this is system D initialize like uh, system D in it. Okay. So next I'll run the same command in my WSL box. Okay. So if you see here, what it is showing is just showing slash in it. Okay. But there in my Linux distribution, uh, Red Hat distribution, it is showing as system D. Okay. This is my system D in it system. This is my sys v system okay that is the reason why it is just showing my slash in it only okay and also one more command what i can run is i can say cat i'll say cat slash frog slash one slash command okay so it is just showing in it okay when i run this in my linux box that red hat box it is just showing system d okay so these are all the commands you can uh, uh, give as an answer like how to check your system whether your system is configured with system d in it or not okay so i'll say ps when i'm saying in it that is nothing but initialization okay so this is system d initialization machine okay so if i say ps hyphen p with one Okay, so it just shows that this is initialized with system D. Okay, so what do you mean by one? This is PID one. Okay, so what do you mean by PID one? I'll just let you know what is PID one. But if you want to check, okay, so how your machine is initialized, you need to check your process ID one because process ID one is the one which starts like that is the first process which will be starting when you boot your machine. Okay. So the same command I will run in my WSL. Okay. So here it is just showing as INIT. Okay. So why I am showing it in two different boxes means I just want to show every command. Okay. So how that works in system D or in SysV. Okay. So next thing I have told you like PID1. Okay. So what is PID1? PID1 is nothing but this is mother of all processes. What do you mean by mother of all processes? Because PID one is the first process to start and then it launches all other processes. Okay. So whenever you boot your system, PID one will start first. Okay. So a lot of interview questions has been shooted on this. When you are uh, going for advanced Linux uh, interviews, like whenever you say like you are working L2, that is four plus years of experience. Definitely you will get these questions. Okay. So what is PID one and uh, how that works and what exactly. Okay. What exactly it does. Okay. Even in um, one of the DevOps interviews, this question is asked like what is PID one. Okay. So PID one is, um, is the mother of all processes on Linux. And also this is the first process to start. And then it launches all other processes. Okay. So please note down this definition if possible so that you can um, easily uh, answer the question whenever someone asks you. Okay. And also, what do you mean by process? Process is nothing but uh, a program. Okay. So, for example, like um, 
one or more running instances of a program okay so uh, example i've already shown you like ssh okay so that program have um, parent process and that um, program will um, be having a child processes okay so i'll just show you like what what i mean by uh, parent process and uh, child processes okay and also the major important thing is whenever we are talking about uh, processes okay so there are also uh, something called demons okay so linux always uh, runs these processes in the background okay so for example if you see sshd httpd uh, system d these are all demons okay so whenever something is ending with d then we are calling it as demons okay remember that whenever something is ending with d okay so nothing but that is a daemon nothing but it is running in the background okay so these are all the process uh, the services which is running in the background okay so how will you check what all the processes are running in your system okay so you all know the simple command that is ps hyphen ef okay so what this will show this will show all the processes okay so what are all the process running in your machine and also if you go here and if you see what is the first process it is your system d process okay so this is your pid one okay so system d process starts first and this is mother of all the processes then how will you check what is a um, uh, parent process and what is the child process okay so if you see here you cannot differentiate that okay but if i run something called ps3 okay hyphen p then i can say that like which is a child process which is a parent process if you see here this is the parent process and this is the child process for this and this is these two are the child process of network manager okay so for example if i want to check the individual process okay so for example if i say ps3 hyphen ps and the process id okay so it just shows like which is the parent process and what is the child process of this okay so this is how you can easily check okay the uh, parent process and the child process for example if i want to check for tune uh, d then if i run this okay so if you see here 1080889 and also system d okay so system d is mother of all process whatever process you choose whatever process you run and check okay so one okay pid one will be the parent process nothing but this will be the mother process okay so just remember that okay and also if you want to um, check only pid and the command it is using you can use command like ps hyphen eo and i'll say pid with command okay so it will show only pid and the command running behind that process okay so these are all very important commands if you want to know you can go with man ps okay so go for man ps you will see all the options like what are all the options you can use with ps ps hyphen ef ef el y ax axu ejh ax jf elf ax ms okay there will be a lot of options okay you guys can go and check okay so this is the command i have just showed you to get security info okay so just run all these commands so that you will uh, know okay so just execute those commands so you know what exactly ps is doing okay so the next um, commands or the next important thing is how will you list the services and their states okay so what are all the services running or installed on your system this is a major important question again on the real time basis okay so whenever you have issues you wanted to see what are the services running on that machine what is the commands you need to use okay so and also uh, you want to know the states of the services whether they are running not running or they are in error state okay so how will you check that okay so using the command called system ctl okay so system ctl is the command okay so where you can um, check all these um, uh, processes or the services okay so whether it's running or not or they are in error state and you can check all that system uh, all the um, uh, things okay and system d manager command um, uh, like used very very regularly okay so this is very very important command and you need to know what exactly this command does okay and also whenever you run uh, system ctl with no options okay so it will list 
all the units which are running on that machine okay so for example if i run this command it will just load you with lot of lot of information see here okay so it just shows you huge number of information okay so like it will show what all the services loaded what are the services active what are the services uh, um, status okay so it says plug mounted waiting running exited exited running okay so it just shows everything okay so what exactly is happening on your machine okay so if you want to do an r d on that just redirect to any one of the files like for example i'll say system ctl uh, i'll just redirect to services.txt just move it there and you can go and check all the services okay so like this you can go and uh, check and also you can send it to the change process or any process you are doing you can see what all the services are running what you have done and all okay so if you want more information then again you can say system ctl hyphen hyphen all okay so here it's just uh, shows all the information okay so you can see the difference right like what is the difference we have seen here okay so here it just shows like uh, load active sub and description okay so here it's just showing everything okay so uh full path okay so and also okay it is just showing like load active sub and description okay and also it is showing uh what all the things are not found inactive dead okay so on the previous uh command we are not we have not seen what are all the inactive process or dead process okay so if you see here there are a lot of inactive process and dead process okay so this is how you can see with hyphen hyphen all okay nothing but you can see active and also inactive services but if you see system ctl only it will show only active files okay so this is how you can see what all the services running okay or else if you want to see only the unit files or you just want to see the unit files and the status of those files okay so you can run command called system okay system ctl and you can say list hyphen unit hyphen files okay so it will just show you the uh, files information unit files information and the state of those unit files okay so if you see here it just shows like what are enabled and what are disabled okay so there are a lot of options you can uh, use okay so with these files and also you can say hyphen hyphen uh, type equal to service okay you want to see only um, service types okay so here you see it just shows the services okay so uh, choose our cron d dot service okay so cron d dot service is enabled and uh, d bus is enabled okay and if you see uh, getty will go for uh, ssh as well okay so if you go down okay so here see SSH dot service is enabled. Okay, so if you want to see only services, you can go with this command. You can say type as service. Okay, so equal to uh, hyphen hyphen type equal to service. And also you want to see only enabled services. Okay, you don't want to see the um, a disabled and static ones. Okay, then what you can do? You can say hyphen hyphen state equal to enabled. Okay, so I'll just say enabled. Then it will show all. The, sorry, enabled. So it will show all the enabled services okay so this is the command okay so you need to um, give to the interviewer okay so how you can check the service what all the services are enabled in your machine okay so that is system ctl list unit files with type service and also state as enabled it will show all the enabled services in your machine okay so these are all very very important commands okay and frequently used commands in real time to check what all the services enabled on the particular machine okay and also if you want to check the uh, disabled commands okay so the same command with state as disabled okay so that you can see what all the commands or what all the services are being disabled and so that you can go and enable those services and also you have already seen like uh, there is something called um, static okay you can also see the static services okay so what are all the static services uh, you have on your machine okay so these are all the things and also one more important thing is one is masked okay so i'm not sure if mask uh, anything with masked okay so once 
system the time date service is masked okay so you can see masked services also okay so here all your unit files where these unit files are okay so we have ran this right so we have said like all the services and every enabled service or disabled service okay so where you can go and check this um, unit files okay so where uh, like how you can go and check them okay so for example if i go to slash usr lib and i'll say system d okay okay so if you see here these are all the system d services okay so if you see here all the things are having okay so you can see all the system d uh, unit files okay so this is how you can check like you uh, and also if you want to enable any service how you can enable that service nothing but you can um, go and say that system ctl enable and the service name or start that service name or stop the service name okay so you can do any uh, one of this okay so whenever you say uh, disabled okay so uh, disable means that there is no symbolic link okay so it has not created any symbolic link and it will not start automatically at boot okay so what all the services which are disabled here okay so these services are not going to start at the boot time okay so you can stop and start these services manually okay so if you want to start any one of these okay you can start you can enable that okay so for example if i say okay system ctl enable enable okay okay so now it created a symbolic link now whenever i start my machine whenever i boot my machine it will come up automatically okay so now if i go for enabled okay enable okay and i'll search for nfs okay so see here nfs hyphen service dot service got enabled okay so this symbolic link should be there whenever you want like whenever your service need to start automatically you have to enable it okay so when you enable it it will start like your service will start automatically when your server boots up okay nothing but when you want to restart your machine after restart it will pick up and it will start your nfs service automatically okay but if you don't enable it if you don't see any symbolic links here okay so here okay so here now it, it has created nfs also okay so here it symbolically has been created for nfs as well okay so i say uh, grep hyphen i nfs okay uh, okay i need to go out and i need to come back okay so then it will show okay so anyway okay so you, whenever you enable it okay so it will create a symbolic link so that whenever you restart your machine it will pick up automatically and it will start your machine okay so that is how you can um, see whether your service is enabled disabled okay so next if you want to see the status okay so definitely whenever you have enabled or whenever you have started the service you want to see the status of this service okay we have just enabled it okay so now i'll check the status okay so what it is saying it is saying like loaded but it is inactive okay because we haven't started the service okay now what i'll do i'll start this service okay i'll start this service now i'll check the status now it says active okay so the my service has been started okay so how will you check the status system ctl status and the service name whatever the service you have given okay just go and check the service so that it will show whether it is started or not okay so but what is loaded okay so loaded is nothing but here loaded right so loaded is nothing but it verifies that a unit file has been loaded into memory and displays its full path okay so whenever we are enabling it is just showing the full path of the service okay usr lib systemd system nfs service dot so nfs server dot service okay so whenever it is saying loaded nothing but it just uh, verifies that unit file has been loaded into memory or not okay so and also whenever it is says active it tells that your service is active or inactive and also 
it will say like how long it has been in that state okay so if you see here one second ago okay you can also see sometimes this is very very important critical when you are in the real time because someone comes and says that my, our service went down but whenever you see the status it says active but you can see like when and what happened to that service okay if something is shows like one minute ago one hour ago so you can say that something went wrong and it has come up automatically an hour ago so you can go and check the logs or you can ask the people or the application team to check the logs on what exactly happened okay so next thing is you know how to start and stop the services okay so if you want to stop this service again i'll go and say system ctl stop okay now i'll say stop okay now this system so this service nfa service is stopped okay so if i go and check the status again okay so it is not active okay nfa service and services loaded but it is inactive okay and one more important command is i can also do a restart okay i'll say restart okay restart is nothing but it just stopped and started okay now if i go and check the status it will be in active state okay so these are very very important commands and how you do uh, manage your services okay so that is very very important okay and also like i said uh, whenever okay so if you want a service or services to automatically start at boot or you want to prevent a service from starting at boot you can disable it completely okay so the how you can do that system ctl enable that service name or system ctl disable that service name okay whenever you do disable it never comes up when you are booting the machine for example if i say if i say system ctl disable ssh dot service then i cannot log into this machine because this is the cloud uh, uh, aws machine okay so if i disable it whenever something goes wrong or someone uh, wants to have a reboot of the machine okay so this never comes up okay so that is one very very important thing you guys need to note okay so never disable the uh, services until unless it is required okay so make sure that you always uh, keep a tab on services whether you want it to start automatically when you are booting or you don't want to start it whenever it is booting okay so that is very very important okay and also if you see um uh, this is something very critical in the real time in the productions okay so never do a restart never do a stop of the service never use disable of the service okay but there are something like whenever you are doing a crt1 or crt2 issue okay so you want to do something okay so you want to stop a service but um sometimes you cannot stop okay so you see that uh, that service may be um, not responding or it is um, uh, having a trouble in restarting it just got hanged okay so you, your normal stop command will not work most of the times okay so like when you have a troubled service okay so how you can um, uh, uh, troubleshoot that okay so stopping a process is called killing the process okay so whenever you are starting the stopping the process nothing but you are killing that process okay so you can use something called system ctl kill okay so without system, like we, 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 like if you want to kill you can say system ctl space kill okay so this command okay so this will just kills that process okay or kills that service okay so what happens when you use system ctl kill so what it will do is it will stop all the processes of that service okay whatever the processes are running on the, under that service it will kill everything okay and also it won't leave any orphan processes okay sometimes what happens means like whenever you are restarting a process okay or stopping a process there will be orphan process which will try to restart okay so the reason why some of the processes or some of the services will hang around or it won't respond for your system ctl stop then you can use system ctl kill and the service name okay so there it will just 
stops all the processes okay then you can go and check the status of it okay or if you want um, uh, the service is not like uh, cleanly stop okay so or if this is not working okay so the, there is only one option that you can use kill hyphen 9 okay so kill hyphen 9 will abruptly kills that service okay but if you are not using 9 it will uh, do a clean stop okay so but if it is not working then you can do a nuclear uh, uh, stop okay so this is nuclear option that is hyphen 9 okay so nothing but it will abruptly kills everything okay so it kills all the services or the processes under this service okay so make sure you never run this on production until unless you have something with uh, a change or if you have um, severity one issue so that you have to do it because the service is not going down not coming up it just hung around okay so make sure you use these commands only by taking uh, appropriate um, permission or appropriate ticket or appropriate change okay so don't do until unless uh, you have a good reason otherwise you will be in trouble and a lot of people have lost their jobs because doing these things okay so next important thing is uh, i've already told that whenever we are using system d your system starts up pretty fast okay so like it will come up very fastly okay but some of the times when you see that your system is coming up very slowly okay so uh, you want to find out why okay so you want to analyze why your system is coming up very slowly okay so you have a command called system d hyphen analyze okay and you can say blame okay uh, analyze okay startup finished okay that is yeah i just done a spell mistake i guess okay system okay i'm i'm just giving s okay so it should be z okay yeah okay so it just shows like uh, if you see here okay so system d hyphen analyze blame okay so if you are running with no options okay it will list all the system processes and how long they took to start okay so if you see here kdump.service lvm2 monitor.service has taken three seconds seven seconds okay so this is the highest um this is the service which took highest time or higher time okay so it took seven seconds okay or else if you say blame okay so you can um check this out okay so using system d hyphen analyze then you can say what exactly is happening okay so how much time your uh, services are taking okay and you can see uh, this is taking seven seconds okay so if your system is very slow it might have taken one minute three minutes five minutes okay then you can see like what is the service which is a service is taking longer time or um, making system very slow you can disable that service okay so that it will uh, it won't come up when you are booting okay so it will uh, come up you wanted to start only after uh, system comes up okay so this is the one uh, diagnosing method okay so whenever someone says like your system is coming slowly okay so what you need to do how you can analyze you can see like what service is taking longer time to uh, come up okay so when, while booting okay so this is very very important command um, in the interviews okay so please uh, take a note of it and uh, uh, whenever you deliver these kind of command, these kind of information to the interviewer, definitely you're going to crack your jobs. Okay? So that's it for these uh, services. Okay. So I've given you in-depth analysis of this. Okay. So most of the things are used in real time. Okay. So in next session, we'll try to see all the managing of users and groups. Okay. So that is very, very important. Okay. So all these sessions are very, very important. If I, um, say okay so if you are still watching please subscribe and uh, whoever are non-subscribers watching please subscribe and whenever you watch any education channels please encourage them subscribe those channels so that uh, they will do more 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 videos for you guys so that it will be helpful for you to gain knowledge and also to get the jobs 
Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.